In the pantheon of Greek heroes, none shines as brightly as Achilles, the swift-footed warrior whose legend is intertwined with the fates of gods and men. Born to the nymph Thetis and the mortal king Peleus, Achilles was a child of both the divine and the human worlds. His life was a tapestry of heroic feats and tragic turns, foretold by prophecies and shaped by the whims of gods. The world of Achilles was a realm where the lines between divinity and humanity were blurred. Gods walked among men, influencing their destinies, and heroes rose to perform feats beyond mortal ken. This was a time when myth and history melded, creating a backdrop of epic proportions for the tale of Achilles. In the shadow of Mount Olympus, the abode of the gods, Achilles grew, unaware of the grand destiny that awaited him. His story is not just one of war and glory, but also a tale of love, friendship, wrath and sorrow. It is a story that has echoed through the ages, a timeless narrative of a hero whose name would become synonymous with greatness and vulnerability. Achilles started his life with a prediction about how great he would be and how he would die. His mother, Thetis, who was a goddess, knew about this and wanted to keep him safe. She tried to make him live forever by dipping him in a special river called the River Styx. She held him by his heel, so that part didn't touch the water. This left his heel as the only weak spot on his body. Achilles was special from a young age, stronger and faster than normal people because of his godly background. His mother, Thetis, wanted him to be ready for the future, so she sent him to Chiron, a very wise half-horse, half-man, to learn. In a green place on Mount Pelion, Chiron taught Achilles about fighting, medicine, music, and thinking deeply. As he grew up, Achilles became a true Greek hero, brave, good at fighting, and kind, but he also had weaknesses that people could relate to. His training was tough and made him strong in both body and mind, getting him ready for a future that needed his smartness and bravery as much as his strength. While Achilles was training, big events were happening that would lead to the Trojan War. When Queen Helen was taken by Paris from Troy, it led to a big war in Greece. All the best Greek fighters were called to fight against Troy. But Thetis, scared of losing Achilles because of a prophecy, dressed him as a girl and hid him with King Lycomedes' daughters. However, he couldn't stay hidden. Odysseus, a clever king, came pretending to be a seller with gifts. He brought weapons, and Achilles, unable to hide his true nature, showed interest in them. Accepting his fate, Achilles decided to join the war. He said goodbye to his mother, who sadly told him that he would be great in battle, but wouldn't live long. Feeling both excited and nervous, Achilles went to Troy, not knowing his actions would make him famous forever as the greatest Greek warrior. A big war was coming, and Achilles had to make a big choice. His destiny was tied to the city of Troy. Helen was taken by Paris, which made the Spartans and other Greek kingdoms angry. All the great Greek fighters and kings were getting ready for war, and Achilles had to decide what to do. His mother had told him that if he went to war, he would have a short but famous life. Achilles knew he could either have a short life full of fame, or a long, quiet life without fame. He really wanted to be famous and remembered as the greatest Greek hero. This desire was very strong for him. At the same time, his mother Thetis was worried because she knew Achilles might die young if he went to war. She wanted him to choose a safe, long life. But Achilles really wanted glory and fame. In the end, Achilles decided to go for fame. He joined the Greek army, led by King Agamemnon, to fight in Troy. The Greek army had many famous fighters like Ajax, Odysseus and Nestor. But before they could go, the Greek ships couldn't leave because of bad winds sent by the goddess Artemis. A seer said the winds would only change if Agamemnon sacrificed his daughter, Iphigenia. Agamemnon was very sad but agreed to do it for the war. This caused a lot of problems later. When the winds got better, the Greek ships went to Troy. 
Achilles' choice led him to many victories and sorrows in Troy. The Trojan War, which lasted ten years, was more than just a fight over Helen. It was a big event, with lots of human mistakes and gods getting involved, making and breaking heroes. As the Greek ships approached the shores of Troy, the stage was set for one of the most epic conflicts in ancient mythology. The Siege of Troy was not just a war between Greeks and Trojans, it was a canvas where the ambitions, passions and fates of gods and men intertwined. Achilles, the greatest warrior of Greece, stood at the forefront of this cosmic struggle, his name destined to be etched in history. In the early years of the war, Achilles' presence on the battlefield was like a storm. His skills in combat were unmatched, his rage in battle, a force of nature. He led the Myrmidons, his loyal band of warriors, with ferocity and tactical brilliance. Under his command, they were more than just soldiers. They were instruments of war, bringing devastation to the Trojans. Achilles' prowess on the battlefield earned him great fame and respect. He captured several Trojan allies and cities, significantly weakening Troy's defences and morale. Among his conquests was the capture of Briseis, a woman of great beauty who became Achilles' prize and, unknowingly, the catalyst for a great rift among the Greek ranks. While Achilles' blade brought doom to the Trojans, it was his conflict with Agamemnon, the leader of the Greek forces, that marked a turning point in the war. Agamemnon, having offended the priest of Apollo, was forced to relinquish his own prize, Chryseis, to placate the god. In compensation, he arrogantly claimed Briseis from Achilles, igniting the wrath of the greatest Greek warrior. Achilles, insulted and furious, withdrew himself and his Myrmidons from the war. He retreated to his tent, his absence from the battlefield a blow to the Greek offensive. This act, driven by pride and anger, had profound consequences. The Trojans, emboldened by the absence of Achilles, began to turn the tide against the Greeks. During this period, the Greek forces faced significant setbacks. The Trojans, led by their prince Hector, launched fierce counterattacks. The walls of Troy, which had withstood the Greek onslaught for years, now seemed unbreachable. The Greeks, deprived of their mightiest warrior, suffered losses and morale plummeted. The situation became dire when Hector, in a moment of towering triumph, managed to set fire to one of the Greek ships. This act was not just a tactical victory, but also a symbolic one, striking at the heart of Greek hopes. The burning ship served as a stark reminder of the Greeks' vulnerability without Achilles. The Greeks, desperate in their plight, sent emissaries to Achilles, beseeching him to return to battle. They offered him riches, honour and the return of Briseis, untouched. However, Achilles, entrenched in his pride and sense of betrayal, refused. His wrath remained unassuaged, his heart unmoved by material offerings. He had transcended the conflict, his personal grievance outweighing the collective fate of the Greek forces. It was during this tumultuous time that the Trojan War transcended the realms of mortals and became a battleground for the gods. The Olympians, each with their loyalties and agendas, intervened in subtle and direct ways. Athena, Hera and Poseidon supported the Greeks, while Apollo, Aphrodite and Ares favoured the Trojans. The war ceased to be a mere mortal conflict, it became an echo of divine rivalries and machinations. As the war raged on, Achilles remained a spectre on the sidelines, his absence as impactful as his presence in battle had been. His tent became a symbol of the Greeks' fractured unity, his inaction a harbinger of potential defeat. Meanwhile, the war continued to rage, a relentless dance of death and glory, setting the stage for further tragedies and heroics. The conflict reached a critical point when Patroclus, Achilles' closest friend and confidant, approached him. Patroclus, deeply concerned by the Greeks' losses and moved by the suffering of his comrades, pleaded with Achilles to return to the fight. When Achilles remained unmoved, 
Patroclus proposed to don Achilles' armor and lead the Myrmidons into battle himself. His hope was to inspire the Greeks and intimidate the Trojans by the mere presence of Achilles' armor on the battlefield. Achilles, moved by Patroclus's bravery and compassion, consented to this plan. He lent his armor to Patroclus, unknowingly setting the stage for a tragedy that would alter the course of the war and finally break his resolve. The decision of Patroclus to enter the battlefield disguised in Achilles' armor was a pivotal moment in the Trojan War. It was a plan born out of desperation and loyalty, a testament to the depth of his friendship with Achilles. Patroclus, a skilled warrior in his own right, hoped to turn the tide of the war and lift the spirits of the beleaguered Greek forces. As Patroclus charged into battle clad in Achilles' armor, the Trojans recoiled in fear, believing that Achilles had returned. The sight of the familiar armor rekindled hope in the Greek soldiers' hearts, and they rallied behind what they thought was their greatest warrior. Under Patroclus's leadership, the Greeks pushed the Trojans back, inching closer to the walls of Troy. However, the ruse could not last. Hector, the Trojan prince and a warrior second only to Achilles, confronted Patroclus. In the fierce duel that ensued, Patroclus fought valiantly, but was ultimately overmatched. The god Apollo, favoring the Trojans, intervened, striking Patroclus and leaving him disoriented. Hector, seizing the opportunity, dealt the fatal blow, killing Patroclus and shattering the illusion of Achilles' return. The death of Patroclus was a moment of profound tragedy. When the news reached Achilles, it struck him with the force of a thunderbolt. The grief that engulfed him was all-consuming, transcending the bounds of friendship and touching the core of his being. Patroclus was not just his closest friend, he was a part of Achilles, a reflection of his better self. His death brought a stark realization to Achilles, the futility of pride and the inescapable nature of loss and suffering. The loss of Patroclus transformed Achilles, his wrath, once directed at Agamemnon and the Greek leadership, now turned towards Hector and the Trojans. In his heart, Achilles harboured only one desire, vengeance. He cast aside his quarrel with Agamemnon, realising that his personal grievances paled in comparison to the loss he had suffered. Achilles' return to the battlefield was a turning point in the war. He donned his new armour, forged by the god Hephaestus, and descended upon the Trojans with a fury unmatched in the annals of warfare. His wrath was not just the expression of personal vengeance, it was the embodiment of the relentless and unforgiving nature of fate. The Trojans, upon seeing the reinvigorated Achilles, were struck with terror. The Greek warrior cut through their ranks like a whirlwind, his anger lending him a terrifying and almost divine aspect. The river Xanthus, where he fought, ran red with the blood of slain Trojans. Achilles' retribution was merciless, his only goal to confront Hector, the slayer of Patroclus. The grief and rage of Achilles following the death of Patroclus underscored a fundamental theme in Greek mythology, the inextricable link between love and loss, heroism and tragedy. Achilles' transformation from a sulking warrior to an avenger marked the final phase of his journey, a journey that was inexorably leading to its tragic conclusion. Achilles' return to the battlefield marked a new chapter in the Trojan War, one fueled by a singular consuming purpose, revenge for Patroclus' death. His grief had hardened into a resolve so fierce it seemed to eclipse even the war itself. Achilles was no longer fighting for Greek victory or glory. He was an avatar of vengeance, seeking retribution against Hector, the Trojan hero responsible for Patroclus's demise. The Greeks, revitalized by Achilles' return, rallied with newfound vigor. Achilles, however, had only one objective in his sight, Hector. He tore through the Trojan ranks with a relentless ferocity, his wrath a palpable force. Each day, he inflicted catastrophic losses on the Trojans, pushing them ever closer to the brink of defeat. Hector, aware of the threat posed by Achilles and burdened by the weight of his responsibility as Troy's defender, 
prepared himself for the inevitable confrontation. The duel between Achilles and Hector was not just a clash of warriors. It was a moment where fate, honor, and the wrath of gods converged. As they faced each other outside the walls of Troy, a hush fell over the battlefield, for this was a duel foretold by prophecy, a meeting of destiny. The battle between Achilles and Hector was a display of skill, strength, and courage. Hector, though valiant and skilled, was no match for the divine fury and prowess of Achilles. The fight was intense and brutal, with both warriors showcasing their abilities, but the outcome seemed almost preordained. Achilles, driven by grief and vengeance, finally overcame Hector, dealing him a mortal blow. As Hector lay dying, he pleaded with Achilles for an honorable burial, a request rooted in the ancient traditions of respect for the fallen. But Achilles, blinded by his rage and sorrow, refused. In a final act of desecration, he tied Hector's body to his chariot and dragged it around the walls of Troy, an act that shocked both Greeks and Trojans alike. This act was not just a personal vengeance, it was a statement of Achilles' grief and his descent into a wrathful abyss. Hector's death marked a turning point in the Trojan War. It was a devastating blow to the Trojans, who had lost their greatest warrior and protector. For Achilles, it was a hollow victory. Though he had avenged Patroclus, it did not bring him peace or solace. Instead, it deepened his sense of loss and the futility of the war. The aftermath of Hector's death was a period of reflection and mourning. The gods themselves were moved by the tragedy, and eventually, Achilles was persuaded to return Hector's body to Troy for a proper burial. This act, though small in the larger context of the war, was significant. It represented a moment of humanity amidst the brutality of war, a recognition of the shared grief and respect among warriors. Achilles' revenge and the death of Hector also highlighted the themes of fate, pride, and the tragic consequences of human actions in Greek mythology. Achilles, in avenging Patroclus, fulfilled part of his destiny, but at a great personal cost. His actions, though driven by love and loyalty, also reflected the darker aspects of his character, his pride and unrelenting wrath. The death of Hector did not mark the end of Achilles' story, but rather set the stage for the final act of his tragic life. As the war continued, the shadow of the prophecy that had loomed over Achilles since his birth drew ever closer. Despite his seeming invincibility, Achilles was not beyond the reach of fate. The death of Achilles was as momentous as his life. It was Prince Paris of Troy, guided by the god Apollo, who struck the fatal blow. An arrow, seemingly inconsequential in the hands of an unremarkable warrior, found its mark on Achilles' heel, the only vulnerable part of his body. This singular vulnerability, a remnant of his mother's attempt to make him immortal, became the instrument of his downfall. Achilles' death was a profound event in the Trojan War, sending ripples of grief and shock through the Greek ranks. The greatest warrior of the Greeks had fallen, not in a glorious duel, but from a seemingly chance shot. His death served as a poignant reminder of the fragility of even the greatest heroes and the inexorable power of fate. The legacy of Achilles, however, transcended his death. He became a symbol of the ultimate hero in Greek mythology, embodying the highest ideals of heroism, valor, and honor, as well as the tragic consequences of pride and human vulnerability. His story, interwoven with themes of glory, love, wrath, and tragedy, has resonated through centuries, influencing literature, art, and culture. In the end, Achilles achieved the immortal fame he had sought, his name and story echoing through time. The Iliad, Homer's epic poem, immortalized his tale, ensuring that the name of Achilles, the swift-footed, the greatest of Greek warriors, would never be forgotten. His story, a blend of divine intervention, heroic deeds, and tragic fate, remains a cornerstone of Greek mythology and a timeless narrative of the human condition.